On this episode, Christian flashes a gang sign, <laughs> has a reaction to an animation, <laughs> and is generally happy about where things are going. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. This is our beautiful, fantastic shmup tutorial. Let us load the current progress. Again, the uh, file at the beginning of the program will always be down in doobly-doo. And so you can follow uh, along right with me. And also there's gonna be a GitHub link if you know what GitHub is and how to use it. Uh, yeah, load shmup. Let's run this. Ah, that's so nice. It's like a huge like blast of plasma co um, coming from our ship. Mwah, love it. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we are going to start, just keep building the shmup. Um, something I want to eventually do, and something that you certainly also probably do want to do, is you want to, obviously, you want to... We want to shoot multiple bullets. Right now we can only shoot one bullet, you know, it's kind of like a bit disappointing. But it's that's kind of like a big step and I want us to build our skills towards that. And the way we can build our skills towards that is kind of like, we again, keep on adding more effects, kind of like keep using the tool set which we already have and, and, and feel more comfortable with the tool set. And there's actually a lot of things that we can do before we get there. Today I want to maybe get into animations, for example. I want to just add some special effects here to, to make, you know, the, the ship, the way the ship, the ship moves, the way the ship feels, to make it feel more alive, more cool to look at. It's, it's a fine ship, but it could be so much better. And we can add a lot of elements to make it feel more alive. For example, how about adding a flame? Like, because it's a ship going through space, how about adding a flame? Or what about if it's banking? You know, if you go move it left and right, it's banking a little bit. How about that, right? And also when you're shooting, very, very important thing that a lot of people making shmups completely forget and ignore. You can see like even shmups that appear on Steam where it's like, okay, once you release a game commercially, you know, you should be like in the know about those things, right? But even those people won't even add a muzzle flash to your ship. Like a muzzle flash is so important. So we're gonna try maybe add a muzzle flash in here and then, you know, if you're gonna get there, that's fine. Let's do the banking first. So we want to maybe uh, have the ship kind of like twist a little bit when it's moving left and right. Let's see how that works. I kind of want to, I, I want, kind of want to move things around a little bit. So, for example, this bullet, I kind of don't like how it's how it's here, because I want to do some things here. So I'm gonna actually go, uh, Control X, bam, it disappeared. Uh, I'm gonna put it like here, down here, bam. Control V to paste it in. You can you can copy sprites like this and move them around. Control X to co uh, to cut it and Control V to paste it in. Yeah, you can also also go Control C to copy. You can also press Delete to just remove it. Uh, anyway, like the regular you know text editing shortcuts we have we have going on here, right? So I want to actually have this ship here, and I want to have the bullet here. Now the bullet has changed. The sprite has changed to sixteen, and I want to actually I want to I want to reflect this in the code. So now it's no longer sprite two, but sprite sixteen that we are firing. Just making sure it looks okay. By the way, little fix I want to do, like it's, I don't like how you start and the bullet flies away, like it um, flies away at the beginning. I'm gonna change this by making the bullets actually spawn uh, off screen. Uh, I'm gonna spawn it like at minus 10 on the on the white position. So it's no not visible at the beginning, right? So it only appears when we actually press the button. Uh, also like, we understand what's happening. Like when you press a button, the bullet flies off screen and it continues flying, right? It, it goes into way negative numbers, but it's, it's somewhere way off screen and still moving there. Technically it's still being drawn, but just off screen and it goes into infinity. If you wait long enough, it will actually come back from the button. But it's, you know, you have to eight, eight, wait over eight minutes or so. It's, it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna address this later at some, some later point. Uh, okay, so what would you want to do? We want to make the ship bank. And in order to do this, I want to actually do some uh, some pixel art here. So I want to create a um, copy of this, this, this sprite. 
where the ship is kind of like banking, where it's moving to the side. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to actually have to move the cockpit in this direction, like this. Oh, something I did here, I, I, you can select something here. This is a select tool uh, and you can also press S, I guess. So you can select some pixels and then you can use uh, the cursor keys to move this portion around. And this is good if you have some kind of feature that you want to reposition. In this case, I, I had the cockpit, right? I had this cockpit thing. I guess it's a cockpit. I want to move it to the left, so I just selected the cockpit and then I moved it to the left. Uh, and then maybe I'm gonna do something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that seems good. Um, I don't know if I I think I liked it better when it was black. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, something like this. Okay, okay, yeah. Like the wings get a bit shorter because it kind of twists. And it, you know, this is like, like perspective stuff, but if you have like a ship and it twists, you know, it, you see it more from the profile. And you know, the wings go kind of like this. And you can see how they get, sh like my fingers get shorter when I turn it around like, like this, right? How this finger kind of like when I twist my hand actually gets closer to the other fingers because from the side, all my fingers are in the same plane. But from this side, all the fingers... <laughs> <laughs> Seems like I'm I'm doing some kind of like crazy greeting, <laughs> uh, but yeah, from this side, you know, the fingers are are, are spread around. Um, so so yeah, this is a bit of a this is a bit of a drawing thing, and this, you know, don't let anybody tell you that pixel art is not you know dr the same principles apply if you are drawing pixel art or if you're drawing you know traditional drawing kind of stuff like you you can easily transfer the skill from drawing traditionally to pixel art. I don't like what I did to the, to the nose here, so I'm gonna go control Z, uh, uh, control Z, yeah, uh, until uh, it's it's back. I think I liked the nose previously. Okay, I like this um, twisted version of the ship. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it on the other side and I want it to mirror this. I'm gonna flip it. And you can do this by just pressing F and it just flips the entire sprite horizontally. If you want to flip it vertically, I think V is the, is the, is the, is the button. You, you can flip it vertically, but we want to flip it horizontally, that's F. Okay, um, something I don't like here is the reflection is wrong around here, so we're gonna change this. And now you can actually, um, if you move your mouse cursor along this animation, you can see on the bottom, you can see how the, my uh, ship is twisting, and I like it, it looks it looks good. It looks like what I wanted. Maybe the engine part is it looks a bit weird. Can we fix this? Does that look better? Uh, I don't know if that looks better. I'm gonna actually maybe set it to, to this color. Does that look better maybe? Yeah, that, that, that's maybe better. I like that, that better. Uh, maybe maybe it should be this though. Yeah, 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 no, that should be this. Yeah, okay, let's let's keep it like this for now. Anyway, it's gonna be up to you. I don't know what kind of ship you, you drew and maybe you don't want to draw, uh, maybe you want to do something really crazy when you go left and right, it's up to you. I just want to have a different sprite when it's going to the left and a different sprite when it's going to the right, okay? Now we also, you know, now the ship is constantly flying to the left. <laughs> uh, and that's something we're going to fix right away. Uh, the ship sprite, is, the default ship sprite is no longer one. Uh, we have to set it to here to sprite number two. Okay, now we're back to normal. Right, and again, repeat after me. We did this so many times before, but repeat after me. We want things to change now. We want, when we press left, we want to have a different sprite. We want the sprite of the ship to change. If we want the sprite of the ship to change, we need to have a variable that remembers, that kind of controls the sprite of the ship. That makes sense. That's something that we already did with the position of the ship. That's something we already did with the speed at which the ship is moving. Uh, that's something we already did with um, the position of the bullet. So we just have to invent a new variable that controls the sprite of the ship. We're gonna call this ship SPR, ship sprite. And we're gonna def by default, we're gonna set it to one, right? And then in the draw function, 
No, actually, by default, we're going to set it to two. I realized we're going to set it to two. And here, when we're actually drawing the ship, we're going to go ship SPR, ship sprite. And we're going to plug it into the first slot of our sprites statement. Isn't it amazing at this point how the entire ship, like each aspect of its visual appearance is controlled by the variables now. The sprite is controlled by the variable. The X position and the Y position, all of these are now completely under the control of variables. Yes, because this is a very mobile thing. This is something that we're controlling all the time. It makes sense that this is something that constantly changes position, appearance, and so forth, obviously. I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna run it. Well, nothing changes right now because we aren't actually changing this variable. Now, now we wanna change the variable when we press a certain button. So we're gonna go here and where are we going left? This is where we're going left. This is the if statement where we're going left. We're actually gonna add another, another line inside this if statement. And again, it's indented, two spaces in front of it, very important. We're gonna set the ship sprite to one. That's where we're going left, left. And then here, uh, when we press the one button, that's where we're going right. And we are going to set the ship sprite. And when you're going right, we're going to set the ship sprite to three. I'm going to save this. And it's great. It's changing the sprite. The only problem we have is that it's not returning to the default position when we're not pressing any buttons. And that's, again, something that we can fix. It's kind of the same thing that we had with the... Uh, uh, with a speed that the speed wasn't resetting like when you press a button it just kept going right uh, It's kind of the same problem here. We're just gonna copy this ship sprite equals to this statement here And we're gonna put it in here So this ship sprite always resets to two if we're not pressing any buttons But if we press any buttons, we're gonna overwrite the two with whatever the buttons are saying either one in this case or three in this case, right? like so Saving, run, and now our ship is twisting. It's twisting when you go left and right. Ah, so beautiful. And we can shoot things. Ah, oh, we're already on our way to make a beautiful schmuff. Mm -mm. Okay, I like it. So this is how we do things. This is how we, we animate things. We just draw a different sprite on the screen. We just draw a different sprite and that sprite will be controlled by a variable. Can we extend this, this, this knowledge? Of course we can. I said that I wanted to maybe have a flame behind my ship. I want to have a flame. How can we do a flame? Well, I want to make a maybe short animation. Maybe like a, um, I don't know, something like this. This is, this is, let, let's just, let's just do, I'm just going to animate something. Maybe something like this. Right? It, it, it starts like here. Maybe that's going to be the first frame, right? It starts like here. And then I want to get longer, the, fl the flame should be a bit longer, but also slimmer. And then maybe really, really long and really slim. Well, I cannot make it any slimmer because it's too, too sprite, but it's like something like this. And then g getting smaller again, right? Oops, I'm, I'm copying the frames around. Something like this, so you can see See how, how it gets like, it like stretches out. This is kind of principle from animation called uh, squ Squash and Stretch. Um, <coughs> there's this beautiful book from Disney animators, which, you know, which has become like this reference material uh, where Disney animators from, you know, back in the 60s, 50s, I don't even know how when it was written. When Disney animators were kind of like sharing principles of, you know, old cartoons, how, how they animate things. And one principle was, a uh, squish and stretch, very, very, uh, very, very famous principle. Um, and that is this idea that, you know, you have the characters that would, would behave a bit like, like, you know, like jelly or something. And if you stretch jelly, then it gets also thinner. Uh, it, if you stretch in one direction, it should also squish in the other direction. And again, in the same other direction as well. If you have a jelly thing and you squish it, it should go also go sideways. Like it should all go in a different direction, spread out in a different direction. And that's something that we're kind of doing here. 
All right, um, maybe we're gonna add some blue because uh, maybe I want this to be more flamish. Uh, something like this, does that work? Uh, I want the, yeah, okay. Um, I don't sure if we're gonna eat, need this last frame. I feel like we can maybe skip it, but we're gonna see about that. Now, this is actually something. Okay, let's just start very quickly. We just wanna draw this flame as behind our ship. I just want to just keep drawing this frame, this, this, this sprite here, sprite number five behind our ship all the time. Let's just do something like this. So this is the sprite of our ship. This is where we're drawing the actual sprite of our ship. And so we're gonna draw a sprite number five at the ship ship X position and then uh, at the ship Y position. We're just gonna dr draw it on top. Let's just see. Okay, there's that plane. It's on top of our ship. We want to, to draw it a little bit under the ship though, a little bit lower, further down. So we're gonna go plus eight here. Eight pixels below our ship. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so I actually haven't realized that this is, um, this actually is something new here and I failed to mention this. So what we did here is we put some math directly into a function call. That's something you can do. Uh, previously, when we did, did math like this, we assigned the result to a variable. We do like an equals thing, like e variable equals and then some math. But something you can also do is you can plug in a small equation directly into a function call like this. And this is really nice and it will kind of like save some time sometimes when you kind of have to tweak a little bit of variable. In this case, you know, we want the, the flame to position slightly offset, you know, not quite exactly at a position uh, that the indicated by the variable, but maybe a little bit, a couple of pixels further down. So this is really useful right now. Now, just to be clear, we are actually not changing the contents of the variable because we didn't do any assignment, right? We just take whatever is in ship Y add eight to it and plug that directly into the function call. The contents of the variable itself, the contents of ship Y are gonna remain uh, the same. So the ship won't move from this. We just put the sprite, the sprite into a slightly offset position. But yeah, this is totally something you can do and it's very, very useful. And there's our flame. Now I could already tell it's a bit too wide. The flame's a bit too wide because the engine is very, very narrow. So maybe I'm gonna add something like this. Is that good? Does that feel good? Mm, now it's connected to the ship. I don't like the, how it's how it's like extending all the way to the ship. I don't like that. And you know, this is kind of like something that that's why you that's why it's nice that Pico Eight allows us to uh, uh, do so quickly edit, jump into the the graphics and edit them. Because imagine if we had to like fire up Photoshop every time something doesn't look quite right and that slows it down so much. That's why I prefer, one of the many, many reasons why I prefer Pico 8 to something like Unity or even something like Game Maker. It's just like so immediate. You can just press escape, click on the Sprite Vampire and just tweak the animation so it looks nice or, or the graphics. Okay, this is good. Like it seems like now you have like this kind of like muck triangle, you know, where it's like the the the, the actual flame is a bit detached from, from the, from the, from the engine. I, that's something I want. And now I want the animation that, that we talked about, this animation where the flame stretches out a little bit. How do we do that? How do we do that? Well, yes, of course, we have to change something over time. We need another variable. <laughs> I told you, it's always the same thing. So now mm, we had a variable that controls the sprite of the ship. We now have to have a variable that controls the flame of the uh, of, of the ship, the, the, the flame sprite. So we're gonna call this flame SPR, frame, frame, uh, flame sprite. I'm gonna set it to five. Uh, that's, uh, by the way, that was our init function. That's where we did this. And then here, where we're drawing the flame, uh, we're gonna, instead of the five, we're gonna go flame SPR, flame, flame sprite. We're gonna run this and nothing changes because we're not actually changing the flame sprite. So we're gonna do this right now. Animate flame. And we're gonna go flame SPR equals flame SPR plus one. We're gonna just every frame, we're gonna increase it by one. 
well. <laughs> That's not quite what we wanted. Let's run this again. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It looks like like it has like a the the engine petered out. Like it's it 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 stalled <laughs> and then it exploded. It's funny. So what happened here? Well, we keep adding plus one, right? So it goes through as animation. So it starts at five, goes to six, then to seven, then to eight, then to nine, and then it goes keeps on going. It goes through all these sprites here to fifteen, and then goes to sixteen, which is the bullet sprite, and then it just keeps going. Right? It's just like it doesn't come back. We have to make it come back. How are we going to make come back? There is multiple ways of doing this. It's actually a really, really cool way of doing this, but I'm not going to show it right right now. We don't have to because it's complicated. It's mathy and. We don't need it to be that math. We can just make it go back. We can make it at this point. We can just go in with an if statement. We're going to go if flame SBR is greater than nine. That's the uh, sprite number nine. That's the last sprite of our animation. If we are bigger than nine, then flame SBR, it resets down to the beginning of the animation which is five. This little code does all the animation. It increases the animation by one. And if the animation is at the end, it just goes back to the beginning and it just keeps looping. Beautiful, beautiful. Now this is where we're going to start tweaking the animation. For example, I the, where, where it's so fat, I kind of like it looks a bit, a bit I don't like it how, how it looks. I don't know why it looks like this. Because we have like two frames of, of being fat and it's it's a, a little bit I, I it, it looks a bit a bit jerky. So I'm thinking of about maybe tweaking this a little bit, make, making this a little bit bigger. Can we do it bigger? Okay, I did some tweaks. I tweaked around a little bit. I, I, I tried some things and I did a, a bit of a change here. As I, as I said, stretch and squish and stretch, 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 stretch and swatch, like, the, you know, the, the, this principle that if you elongate something in one dimension, it kind of has to go thinner in the other direction. Um, and so, yeah, we have like this, this is kind of like our default flame. And so we elongate, so it has to be get a bit thinner. Then it returns to its default, but then we want to maybe, uh, uh, squish it and then made made it uh, wider. So I want to maybe stretch it in two di dimensions, longer and wider, longer and wider. I want to and like I want to have this kind of animation. It's nice. Now it looks a bit more like a flame. Good, 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 good. Now, now you can see immediately because something is animating, our ship looks a lot more alive, a lot more lively, and a lot more fun and quirky. Like it looks a bit cartoony because the flame is a bit cartoony, I have to say. It, it feels more alive and that's kind of like what game development is all about, making things alive and fun and cool. Good. This is how animation works. This is how you how you do do this. Now let us do one last thing. I talked about the muzzle flash. About, I talked about the thing that all of the so many shmup developers are forgetting this and we are going to get it right from the beginning. So if something appears, generally, if something appears on the screen, if something comes to the stage, like think of your screen as a theater, if somebody appears on the screen, it shouldn't just like bloop into existence, you know, that's that's not how real life works. And I'm not talking about realism. I'm, I'm, about, I'm talking about, you know, that's not how, how it, that's not, doesn't feel right. It looks, that feels like magic. That feels like, you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, taking off the ring, suddenly it's there, right? No, uh, if something appears on the screen, it should, there should be some kind of explanation why it's there. <laughs> uh, and if that explanation is, you know, because a bullet appears because it was fired out of the ship, then we need to have something, a little explosion at the beginning of, uh, of the front of our ship to indicate like, ah, okay, that we fired a bullet, right? Um, and so, yeah, I want to show a little bit of a, of a muzzle flash. Now the thing is, uh, 
we could make it um, like an animation here, the same way we did here. We can basically take this this flame animation and do a muzzle flash like this. But uh, I also want I also want to show you how to do things with code. You don't we don't have to use always you know sprites for everything. We can also do it with code. So let's let's try something like this. Again, it's gonna be it's gonna be um, uh, variables as always. It's always variables. Let's call this muzzle. Okay, let's call let's let's call this zero. If muzzle equals uh, muzzle starts with zero. And here, where we're drawing things, after we've drawn the ship and we've drawn the uh, the flame of the ship and we've drawn even the bullets, af even after that, we're just gonna draw a circle. Circ fill. We had that in the first episode, and we're gonna put it right on top of the ship. Sp ship X, ship ship Y, and the size is gonna be really tiny for now. Just I just want to make a really tiny one, and uh, then the color is gonna be all white. It's just gonna be like an all white explosion. Seven, like so. Let's run this. You can see this is this is our muzzle. This is our muzzle flash. Now it's weird, right? We set it exactly where the ship is, but it's on the top left corner of the ship. That's not where the ship is, isn't it? I haven't talked about it, but now is a good place to discuss this. When we're drawing sprites to the screen, when we're indicating a position at which a sprite has to be drawn, that position refers to the top left corner of the sprite. And that's, you know, it, it just defaults to the fact that this is kind of like zero, zero. This is the origin of the sprite, zero, zero. That's the top left corner of the sprite. So when we say, for example, uh, I'm going to go sprite, I'm going to draw this ship, the ship number two. I'm going to draw it on a position zero, zero, right? I'm going to draw it at zero, zero. I'm going to run this. And as you can see, it appears on top left corner. I'm going to draw it now in a position 128, zero. Now it's no longer there. It's no longer there. It's not longer visible because top left corner is drawn at the right edge of the screen. So it's kind of just off screen. If we bring it back, if you put it like 126, you can see, ah, it's coming back. If you put it at 27, you can see like the first sprite of it, right? Um, that's why when we had like this uh, check here, the ship X, if it was greater 120, not 128, the width of the screen is 128. Uh, but we want to stop it already at 120 because the ship is 8 pixels in size. 128, 120 plus 8 is 128, that's the width of the screen. We have to account for the size that the ship has a certain size and that the position of the ship refers to the top left corner of and we're gonna. This is gonna be a bit of a problem later on because it's, it's like it feels it should be the center, right? Um, uh, but there's also some advantages for, for uh, of of the fact that it's a top left corner. But anyway, um, yeah, that just like some exemplifying why the muzzle flash appears on the top left corner of the of the of the ship because when we're drawing the circle, those two coordinates actually refer to the center of the circle. Right. So we want to maybe the circle appear at where where you know the explosion is. So let let's feel out where that that kind of is. Let's go plus three. Yeah, that seems center. And we immediately also have a bit of a problem that the the the, the circle we're drawing it's it, it's odd in in a number of pixels it is right. Like if you if you if you, if you make the circle smaller, just the radius of one, you can see that it's it's just three pixels in width and height is just like a little cross. But our ship is actually even in the number of pixels it has. Like there is no center pixel row. There's like a two pixels uh, rows in, in the center here. That's a little detail we're going to talk about later. But um, yeah, there's we cannot actually place it in the center of the screen. Our our ship doesn't have a single pixel that is exactly the center. It has this cluster of four pixels here in the center here. That is the center of the ship. But there is not like a single pixel that is exactly at the center. Uh, that's just how we've drawn the ship. That's just okay. That's just like, you know, a natural result of us using the eight times eight sprites. But it's okay. We're going to deal with this. It's, it's fine. It doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. 
Right, so let's say this is going to be the, where the muzzle flash begins. And let's put it a bit higher, maybe. Something here. Uh, maybe a bit too high. Maybe, maybe something like this. Okay. Now I want an explosion happening, a little explosion happening here at the center of the screen. And what we're going to do is just going to make a circle that just goes bigger. Actually, no. We actually want to make it go smaller because it's a muzzle flash. It's a sudden explosion. I know it's a bit unintuitive, but you think of, of an explosion, something gets smaller and gets bigger. That's true. But if it's like a sudden explosion, it kind of like flashes. Like, because in muzzle flash is like, you know, it's like a very sudden flash. So we want to flash a big circle and, and make it shrink very quickly. Um, that's the animation we want. Sorry, I got, got things mixed up. Okay, so we're going to do something like this. We're going to plug the muzzle, the variable that we created. We're going to plug it here in the, in, in, in the size of, this, of the circle. And we're going to start with the muzzle size zero. So if you run this, it's, it's, it's like a tiny dot right now, right? And when we shoot the bullet, here's where we're shooting a bullet. This is where we play the sound effect. This is where we're resetting the bullet to the position of the ship. We're going to also set muzzle to like five. So it's bigger now. So we're going to press the button. Now you can see the muzzle is really big. All we want to do is now the muzzle to shrink down again. So we're just always going to say animate mu muzzle. I always say muzzle, but actually I mean muzzle flash. Animate muzzle flash. We're going to say muzzle. Uh, actually, we're going to do an if statement. If muzzle is greater than zero, then muzzle equals muzzle minus one. So if muzzle is is there, exists as an explosion, we're just going to decrease it by one until it reaches zero, in which case, you know, this if statement won't, won't fire anymore. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one little thing, I don't like how the dot is always, always there. I want uh, the muzzle not to be drawn if it's at zero. So I'm going to go if muzzle is greater than zero, then. And that's where I will put the circle fill function. Uh, and this is the function that draws the muzzle. Uh, and I'm going to put this function inside an if statement that checks if muzzle is greater than zero. So muzzle will start at five and then it will shrink down to zero. And when it gets at zero, we're not going to draw the muzzle, muzzle anymore. So it's a bit more cleaner. That's good, right? That's good. That, that feels better. And now we can actually tweak a little bit the muzzle. Uh, so it's five. We can make it, no, really big. And I mean, this is, this is amazing. Maybe if, if, if the muzzle is that big, maybe you want to maybe move it a little bit up. Uh, but I think 10 is a bit too much. And the thing with the muzzle is you kind of want to uh, balance it a little bit, maybe with the side of the bullet. And that's going to be up to you to experiment with a little bit. Also, maybe you want to maybe shrink it faster so it uh, uh, appears a bit more violent. So here you can increase, you know, the minus two to even lower. So it's, bit, it's more flashy, right? So it's, it's more of a flash. I don't know. I don't like, I don't like the flashy thing. I think that, that, that's better. But I want to maybe set it a bit higher up. So here, the put this position, uh, that's plus three. I'm gonna maybe make it minus two. Yeah, it feels more and more. more like it. And you know, this is now your field to experiment with. I'm not gonna uh, play around with too much. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some of the fun to you to experiment with. We added a lot of effects today. We added banking of the ship. We added a flame behind the ship. We added a muzzle flash. So important, so easily forgot. We are making this little, sh uh, the movement of the ship, the interaction with the ship, we're making it feel fun. And this is important because this is going to be the core interaction with, of the player. This is what the player is going to be doing. They're going to be controlling the ship and we want to make sure that it feels nice and cool and it's enjoyable and fun and, and, and quirky and, and, and lively. 
All right, we are going to move on to the dog zone. That's right, the doggy zone. So as I said, I want to ex you to experiment with those effects a little bit. Like see what happens. Maybe for example, uh, something that would be nice to try out is yeah, there's no just you know, a sprite for left and right, going left and right, but maybe you want to have action and animation. You maybe you want to uh, bank it slightly and then even more as you keep pressing the button. That's something you you can do. Something I would really, really encourage you to try out is to actually animate the bullet. That's something that a lot of people are forgetting that the bullets are, I mean, this is a hot ball of plasma. Obviously it has to, it makes sense that it would animate somehow, right? So let's, let's maybe, let's add, let's add some rotation or some squish and squash to the bullet. Let's just add some more liveliness to this maybe part of the, of the, of the game. I want to choose to, to experiment with those effects a little bit and add some more of your own to this. Uh, by the way, there is a discord. We have a Discord that you can join and there is a channel specifically for this tutorial. And you can feel free to post your examples and, and, and your, your beautiful creations in this channel and share it with other people to show them off. I think this is really cool. I'm gonna show you a cool trick. You can press F6 and it saves a screenshot to the desktop and you can post it on social media. But that's, that's nothing, that's nothing. You can also like you can also press it in F6 during a game, obviously, and show some parts of the game you, that doesn't just work in the editor. But you can also press F9, and it will save a bunch of. It will make an animated GIF of the last 12 seconds and save it on the desktop. So you can show off your animations. You can you know, show you playing around, shooting your beautiful weapons. Press F9, and it will be saved to the desktop. And then you can post it on social media. You can post it. Uh, and our Discord channel, you can share your creations with us. That's awesome. Play around with this, make some beautiful animations happening. This is also the moment I want to do a big shout out to the beautiful crew of supporters on Coffee. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my supporters on Coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of this series earlier, so there is no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind-the-scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. All right, and so yeah, this is it. This is this episode. We've been doing some animation. Our shmup is looking more and more lively and fun to interact with. On the next episode, we are going to maybe add some UI, adding more elements to, uh, to uh, this game so it feels more like a real game. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.